Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Presiding Member, it is most unfortunate that this parliament is witnessing many unprecedented events one after the other, beginning with the elected executive president abandoning office and leaving the country, the entire cabinet resigning. We see cabinet ministers being arrested and detained and now a no-confidence motion being moved against the speaker himself. There are two important components of this no-confidence motion. One relates to the conduct of the speaker during the committee stage amendments, the manner in which he refused to consider the valid objections that were raised by the opposition, which resulted in a bill being enacted into law totally against or rather contravening certain directions that have been given by the Supreme Court. Then the other component relates to the conduct of the speaker in his capacity as the chairman of the Constitutional Council in interpreting the provisions of the Constitution to suit the whim and fancy of the executive when it came to the decision to appoint the Inspector General of Police. In both these matters, I would first of all, before we put the blame squarely at the Speaker, also point out that both the Attorney General as well as the officer's desk in this parliament, the Secretary General and her two assistants, also must bear some responsibility. Why do I say this? It has been the practice in the House when such an issue is brought to the notice of the Speaker, it is the duty of the officials of Parliament to advise the Speaker regarding the alternative methodologies with which we can address that uh, issue. Particularly, it was open to the Speaker to suspend the House temporarily call for a party leaders meeting, summon the Attorney General's representative who was in the official's box. And this was a very request that we made. Ordinarily, Mr. Presiding Member, you yourself is aware, I as a party leader hardly get, allow myself to get onto the well of the house. On that occasion, I also got onto the well of the house because I saw the seriousness of the issue. Because we discussed with Mr. Sumandran, who was also the counsel in the case, where not less than 45 petitions were filed against this online safety bill. That's an unprecedented number of petitions that were filed in the Supreme Court. And what did the Attorney General do when those petitions were filed? Out of 57 clauses, when he started addressing court, even before the petitioner started addressing court, he sought permission of court to outline the amendments to almost 31 clauses. Almost more than half the bill, admittedly by the Attorney General's position, was in contravention of the Constitution. And this is the whole problem. In the first instance, when the legal draftsman's office sends the bill to the Attorney General, he certified it as uh, being in conformity with the Constitution, and that's how the Cabinet approved the bill, right? So, he failed at the first instance, and subsequently he had to face 45 petitions, and then it was admittedly yesterday by the Minister of Justice, he says he was arguing about uh, some clauses, saying that those clauses have been accommodated as suggested by the Supreme Court, in differently numbered clauses. But he admitted that at least four of those clauses, clauses had not been in conformity with the Supreme Court's decision. And therefore, the cabinet has already decided to move amendments. And this is the very reason why we wanted the speaker to take that simple decision. This unfortunate situation of moving a no-confidence motion wouldn't have come about if the officials at the official desk in parliament, discuss this matter with the speaker, convince the government benches, and call a party leaders meeting by suspending sittings for a very short while. This whole issue would have been sorted out. 
Now we have a bill which has been enacted into law totally against the Supreme Court's instructions. So that is one component of it. The other component, of course, is the matter concerning the Constitutional Council. Before coming to that, let me narrate this uh, particular episode that happened during the rule of King Charles I in England. This is a famous episode where King Charles I decided to enter the chamber of Westminster House of Commons forcibly and try to arrest members of parliament thinking that Speaker Lenthal who was presiding would not object to the conduct of the king. But it is now history. The position of Speaker Lenthal who epitomized how a speaker should behave. This is what he said. I have neither eyes to see nor tongue to speak but as the house is pleased to direct. In other words, he said, I am the servant of the house, not the servant of the king. I am not here to listen to you. I will decide as the house decides. So what is happening? This is an abject lesson, lesson for our speaker as well. He should decide on his own, bringing his mind to bear and not to cave into the women fancy of the executive and do as he pleases. That's what he exactly did when it came to the decision of the Constitutional Council. What does he do? He interprets the Constitution. He writes a letter to the President saying, if we assume that the two abstentions are to be taken as votes against the motion that was there, or rather the, the request by the President to appoint a particular individual to the office of IGP, then, if it is so, if I am requested to consider that matter, I would, if I am allowed to use my casting vote, I would then decide to cast my vote in favor. That obviously has been, letter has been written after the Constitutional Council meeting is concluded. This is a total violation of his constitutional duty. And this is why the opposition felt that this no confidence motion should be brought against the speaker. This is very unfortunate because it's normally you don't bring motions against the speaker. As a matter of fact, I tried to persuade even the opposition to reconsider it. But however, I am part of the opposition. I am convinced of the way in which the speaker has misdirected himself quite deliberately, losing the equilibrium that he has to maintain, the balance he has to maintain in the conduct of affairs as a custodian of the affairs of this house. So therefore, this unfortunate motion has come about. So in these circumstances, we must also consider the nature of the, the bill itself is so draconian. That is why we wanted some more time to study the bill. But the government was in an indecent hurry to push through with the amendments. Now, I would like to quote this because they are about uh, the manner in which such online safety legislation is being enacted in some jurisdictions. There, are, there is or seems to be a conflict between these tech companies and governments, mainly for possession of data about people and groups. Governments want to possess this data. They want the tech companies to share the data with them or at least give them access. The tech companies, of course, want to guard this data because it is their true wealth. They use the data to maximize their revenues, earn profits. Governments want the data for surveillance. Both want the data to manipulate and control populations and make themselves more powerful. That is why they bought brought the online safety bill. The predominant aim of the government seems to be to push the platforms to give it our data and take down our content. It is not only the posts that are critical of it and inconvenient to it to be taken down, but also for the originator to be identified. Why would this latter requirement be necessary unless the government wants to intimidate, persecute and punish its critics? and ideological and political opponents. This is why they bought the online safety bill. 
And there's a very, very dangerous provisions were enshrined in it. And that is why the Supreme Court held that more than half the bill needs to go either for a two-third vote or for a referendum, unless otherwise amended according to its own directions. And that is where the Speaker faulted himself. And fault not only lies at his feet, but also at the official's table. They too should have exercised some caution and cautioned the Speaker to adjourn Parliament for a very short while. Member. So, therefore, it is very, very unfortunate that this uh, motion is being brought, but since it has validity, we will be voting for it. Thank you.